Hey friends, this is Dr. Trudy, the host of The Christian View. I'm excited to be with you today and just share a little bit of uh, um, God's word to you um, today. So if you're listening by radio or podcast, um, watching by YouTube, um, I just want to say thank you. Or if you're listening or watching by any of our other um, platforms that we're on, I really just want to say thank you for tuning in. It's such an honor to be able to share the gospel of the good news with Jesus, of Jesus Christ to anyone and everyone. Um, just the other day, I, I took um, some of my team of the Christian View um, on our board, and we went to a senior citizens in memory care a facility to pass out flowers and cupcakes. And, you know, it's just I, every time I go out to do outreach, I'm just blessed and blown away by the goodness of the Lord and how people are just so ready to receive. They're ready to receive from the Holy Spirit. We've just got to be willing and we've just got to go. And so um, I just want to encourage you, if you're not following us on social media, to go ahead and um, like, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, because there's a lot of fun things that you can get involved in as well um, with us. Or it may just encourage you to go out and do something that God's called you to do, which is something we're going to talk about today. And that is moving forward. And what is keeping you from moving forward? The Lord, um, I was going to actually talk about disappointment and um discouragement today and how to overcome that. But um, the Lord put um, this on my heart today. So I'm going to go with what um, the Holy Spirit placed on my heart today. And so I went to 1 Samuel 16, 1 and 2. And then I also went to um, Isaiah 43. And so they, they the two go together. And I'm going to explain to you in just a few minutes um, how they go together. And so if you go to 1 Samuel 16, verse 1, it says, The Lord said to Saul, How long will you grieve for Saul when I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. But then Samuel said in verse 2, But Samuel said, How can I go? When Saul hears about it, he will kill me. Think about that. I pause because I want you to think about that. Samuel said, if I go and Saul hears about this, he's going to kill me. So Samuel was more concerned over Saul than he was over the Lord and what the Lord had called him to do. So my question to you is, is are you stuck where you are because you're afraid of what man may say or what man might do to you. You know, it says that we are to fear God. But when we start fearing man, we place man in the position of God. And therefore, they become an idol in our life. Because we're more afraid of what man will do to us than what God will do to us, right? And so I want to ask you, are you stuck in bondage to the fear of man? And I can ask you that question because I was for a very, very long time. I was so afraid of what man would think about me or what they would say about me. You know, I had the what if syndrome. I had the fear and I was so afraid. And God wants to set you free from fear of man today. He wants to set me free of fear of man today. But we have to get to the point that we believe God's word. We believe God's word and we believe God more than we believe maybe what we see in the natural. Sometimes, and that's what's that's what faith is, y'all. It's moving forward even when we don't see well. That's the whole book of the book of faith um, in the Bible. They move forward with the Holy Spirit. They move forward with Christ knowing that they believed his word. They believed God so much that they believed and they move forward. But so often we get so stuck, we get paralyzed. It, I think it's because we analyze everything. Well, what are people going to say? What are they going to think? And we get stuck. But God is saying to you now to move forward. He wants you to shake off the fear of man, the doubt, the um, the rejection. Just think that God, that rejection is just God's redirection. Shake it off. It says in scripture that if you're not received, then shake the dust off your feet and keep moving. But so often when we're not accepted somewhere, when um, when we feel rejected, 
we take it inwardly. Well, what, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? What, what if nothing's wrong with you? What if scripture is true and you have all that you need for life and godliness? God has given you everything you need for this life. Shake off the rejection, shake off the doubt, and even shake off the failure. How long are you going to let the failure of your past dictate your future? How long are you going to let that job that you got let go of keep you from moving forward? How long are you going to let that divorce hinder you from be believing you are enough in Christ, that you are enough, not in your own strength, but that you're enough in what Christ has said in his word that you're enough. Can you imagine what our life would be if we didn't worry so much about what people think about us, if we didn't worry so much about life and what the world says is right and we get back to what God says is right and what God says is good enough and what God and what God values versus what the world values. I don't want you to think I'm lecturing to you today. I want you as people in my life wanted me when I was walking in fear of man, when I was walking in self-doubt, I want you to have God's love and God's word rooted so deep in your heart that you are set free to be who God created you to be, that you are set free to walk in the fullness and the abundance of Christ. And right, we're going to have hiccups. We're going to have speed bumps. People aren't going to like us. People are not going to receive us. But do you have an audience of one? Are you having an audience of many? Christ came to set you free and he wants you to be free indeed. He wants you to walk forward. He, he's ready for you to go. He's ready for you to embrace the next step. And that takes me to um, Isaiah 43, 19. It says, listen carefully. But before it, before that, it says, do not remember the former things or ponder on the things of the past. Listen carefully. I'm about to do a new thing. Now will it spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will put a road in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. He's saying, will you not re be aware of it? But some, y'all, we miss it sometimes. We miss it because we're stuck on the former things. We're stuck looking backwards when God is saying, behold, I am doing a new thing. Will you not receive it? Will you not see it? And so often we can't see it, y'all, because we're walking, we're looking behind us. We're looking in that rear view mirror of all the past hurts, of all the past rejections, of all the past, you name it. But God is saying, I need you to turn around. I need you to walk forward. I need you to see that I am doing a new thing and it is good. It is good because it is God and everything that God does is good. You know, we may go through life and we're going we're gonna to have those bumps. We're going to have those roadblocks. But don't let those discouragements and, and disappointments defeat you. Let them help develop you. Those, de those disappointments and defeat and um, discouragement doesn't have to define you, but they can develop you as you go forward. Don't let them keep you stuck. Don't let fear of man keep you in bondage another day. Christ wants to set you free. And so you may be thinking, okay, well, that's great. I want to be set free. But what about those dreams that have died? What about the um, the visions that I, or have been inside of me that 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 are just gone now because, because we gave up? Here's the thing. If you go to the book of Ezekiel, I think it's chapter 36, God takes Ezekiel over a whole um, graveyard of dead bones. And he asks him, will these bones not live? And Ezekiel says to God, Lord, only you know, only you know. And God says, I'm going to breathe new life. So God wants to breathe life into your situation. He wants to breathe hope into your circumstances. He wants to breathe his Holy Spirit so that you may live, so that those dreams that have died that God has placed inside of you can come back alive. God wants you to be victorious. But I want to ask you again about, go back to 1 Samuel, about Samuel. And Samuel was afraid. And Joyce Myers always says, do it afraid, do it afraid. Because if God be with you, who can stand against you? I want to encourage you to get in God's word. Find out for yourself what God says about you, what he says about the situation, what he says about your circumstances. 
because God is for you and he wants you to live victorious today in everything you do. Again, yes, we will have we will have mess ups. Disappointments will come, right? But God is always there. He is always faithful. He's saying, okay, you had a disappointment. Let's learn from that disappointment. Let's learn from that rejection. Let's learn from that fear. And let's move forward because I've got great things for you. Let's don't get stuck in the past. Let's don't get stuck in the rejection. Let's don't get stuck in the, in the disappointments. Let's get up. Let's learn and let's move forward. And just like the Lord said to Saul, I mean, to Samuel, he said, fill your horn with oil and go. Fill your horn with oil and go. Where have you decided and where have you given up? Where have you decided that your failure is final? That that rejection is, is just who's, who you are? Where have you decided defeat? Because God is saying today, get up, fill your horn with oil, and go. 365 times in scripture, God says, do not fear. We have to get rid of fear of man so that we can walk vict in victory in Jesus Christ. He wants to do a new thing in you and through you, but you've got to be ready. And I want you to be ready. All right. Hopefully, hopefully you haven't thought of this as a, um, as a lecture today. I just really felt it in my spirit that God wants to set some people free today of shame, guilt, condemnation, and fear of man. And scripture says, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. So Father, I thank you, Lord, that whoever is listening to this, Lord, by radio, podcast, wherever, Lord, that you will set them free, that they will have a supernatural love encounter with you, Lord, that they will be able to walk in freedom, that their failure does not define them, that the rejection is not who they are, that the divorce is not who they are, Lord, that they can, as you said, fill their horn with oil and go. Go in the boldness of Jesus Christ, knowing that if God is for them, that no one can be against them. Father God, we come against all fear, all guilt, all shame, all condemnation, Lord, and we lay it at the foot of the cross. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, for the freedom that comes with knowing you, with believing you, with, with accepting you, and with just accepting the love that you have for us, Father God. We thank you. We thank you and we love you. And I pray victory over each person today who's listening um, or who's watching, Lord, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And I love you, Lord. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for setting us free. And thank you, Father God for your word, which is your love letter to us in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. Y'all have a fabulous day. Bye-bye.